Tusk. Um, sorry, I hate that thing with a passion. Uh, so you got Drawora giving you a nice bonus. Only a little bit early on. You need to get her to level 6 before you really start seeing any kind of, like, real results out from that. But then the Razor will be having a better time. But he's already going to have a better time by that point anyway, because you're going to have your Plasma Field. So you're able to farm with that, or you're going to have a higher level up in Static Link. And at the moment, there's only one hero that can evade that Razor. So if you put that Doom or the Centaur into the middle lane, dead. Like... You give away so much. The, the, the Doom Ring would have to trigger Scorched Earth in order to get rid of the, of the Static Link. That's why I think this Weaver is actually going to head himself in towards the middle lane to go up against the Razor, which isn't also a great selection either, because the Weaver is a very fragile kind of hero. And the reason why the time-lapse timing is really, really critical for that hero is you're only normally in the mid-game running around with 1,100 to 1,300 life points. And with that light amount of life points, you've really got to be careful about your positioning and uh, as well as your, your, your cooldowns on time lapse. Not to mention having the animation time available to cast it and then use the time lapse. So, with all that in mind, I'm actually starting to like LGD's laning, laning a little bit better. <laughs> as, uh, as my brain is actually slowly starting to catch up with this, when you think about it, the Weaver's going to get. I'm not going to say destroyed, but he's definitely going to get shut down, or at least he won't be able to initiate into maybe, unless maybe make some big mistakes, or Rubik and Visage make some really good rotations. Uh, if they try and run aggro tri lane, that would work for the aggro tri. Because the Drow Ranger up against that would die very quickly. The Weaver can cut the distance. Um, that's not going to help you early on because obviously Drow Ranger doesn't have level 6, so there's no point coming in close. But with the Rubik and the Visage as, as well as the Weaver, they can pump out a lot of damage to these LGD heroes who don't have direct control. They only have the Paralyzing Cask available. That's their only controlling ability really on this top lane. The Cold Arrows would work nicely up against either Centaur or the Doombringer if they're running on the off lane. Because it, they're merely heroes, and you get their extra slow on them, then the chilling touch will come in. The dash might work against them because just the amount of time it takes to attack means that the cold arrows can't really do as much work. But at the same time, a level 1 cold arrow is just a small harassment. You don't really get a good effect out of the cold arrows as far as up against melee heroes with any form of movement speed. Like a Shadow Shaman, yeah, level 1 cold arrows, they could work. Um, but any no normal hero, as far as... Um, and offlane, you need level 2 or level 3 at, uh, at least in order to have some good effect coming out from that that Drone Ranger. And that's with that, they're slow. And then you got your Cold Feet and then your Vortex and all this jazz together. The Bouncing Sun might be enough. So if light gaming overextend themselves, sure, LGD gaming can bounce. The middle lane, I don't know how light gaming are really going to properly win that one. And then to the offlane, you have a Void versus a Centaur, or a Void versus a Doom. So... It can... Like, all, all the lanes really will come down to... I'm not going to say who could outplay their opponent, but it really does come down to the head-to-head -head matchups, as well as the potential just to... Whoops, sorry. Uh, I don't know why Cap is in there. Man's asleep. <laughs> He's casting until late last night. Gets a well-earned rest. Uh... Yeah, but as far as this matchup goes, it's... I think it's really going to come down to pl individual player performance in the lane to really decide who is going to win this one. The Rubik and the Visage as well. I I want to see if it's cap if Super as well as... Uh, I don't know how to say this, even though, like, obviously it's 5,400. But if it's, like, 5,400, is that how he wants to have his name pronounced? 5,400. Yeah. 5,400, we'll call him. Uh, they will be heading down to the bottom lane as the Rubik, but these guys, you see smoke already over on Super. This is the other Super, not the uh, VG Gaming Super, the other Super. Uh, so yeah, they are going to run a, a, a safe lane, so this works perfectly for LGDC deck. Now, you already knew the Faces Void's going to get shut down the off lane. This is just a, a thing you accept. You're not going to get a lot of farm on him. If you do, then that's what we do now, what we day. Uh, but the main thing you're searching for is just experience. That's all. So maybe you can contest some pulls here and there, but that's really all. The check Roshan, there's no one that can tank that. Uh, <laughs> the Void as well as, as well as the Raids could do a little bit with, with the Voodoo Restoration, but... Uh, 
it'll be a very risky rush to go for. This is all about laying for LTDC deck now. And they will have their defensive tri lane up here on the top lane. Uh, NCT will be the offlane Doombringer. He's going boots first, which is a nice thing for him. But he's going to realize that these boots don't help him in the lane at all. The cold arrow is slow, isn't going to stop him from, uh, from escaping. But at the same time, if you get hit by that bouncing cask and you get two stuns onto you, because you don't have any stout shield, because you have no armor, you're going to drop pretty quickly. So XTT, this is not going to be the easiest lane in the world for him on the offlane. So middle lane, they did actually switch the weaver in. So this is this is a better choice. It's while it's a risky kind of choice because of obviously plasma field damage. <laughs> That's kind of what you have to do, and uh, you're seeing maybe already preparing for this, and that's actually really, really smart. Let's let's weave a no straight away. You can't hide inside Shikuchi. Gets a little bit of bonus Denied. damage because he's uh, denying up whatever he could find. XTT. You know what I was talking about First with no blood. defense. First that's blood. what it is right there. And a point well Level one taken. cold arrows, chilling touch, bonus damage, and a paralyzing cask. The cold arrows weren't stopping him from running out then, it was the paralyzing cask that was doing most of the heavy lifting. And now Lai Gaming lose their offlaner. But a melee hero up against those three range, it's 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 not gonna work. And they've now fed the Drow Ranger a little bit. God has gotta keep these pull throughs happening too. And I kinda wanna see the ancient apparition moving out of the lane during these moments. Sure, getting level 2 on this guy is going to be nice because then you have an Ice Vortex, but you want to have level 6 over on Dro Ranger. This is like the critical thing you must have happen. Uh, and that, look, look at see what Void does. He just runs through. Point to soak up any experience he can. If he can find an opening, he'll go for it. But he cracks level 2 on that lane. The Doombringer is level 2 now. He's devout a creep and is going to head towards the top lane with, with uh, Unholy Aura. But even that regeneration when Scorched Earth now won't be enough. Again, Ancient Apparition, please move out of the lane. Uh, pff, you, you need to power level your Dry Ranger. You really need to power level your Dry Ranger. What you gonna pick up? Gloves of Haste? What a selfish girl. You could even not pick up the Gloves of Haste and pick up uh, the Band of Elves kid instead. Just to give the rest of your team something more. Because right now, maybe gets plus six. And that's all he gets. Radius you could just get Drow Ranger at level attack. 6. Alright, so Doombring is going to sit up here on the top lane. He's just here to soak up experience and if he can get in range, devour. And this will push the Create Wave straight back again. And uh, really, LGD C deck, they can't force this lane just yet. Middle lane, to no surprise whatsoever, uh, we're looking at a Razor who's winning the CS. 15-4 up against 10 for 0. A Weaver who's only got Tangos, now he's actually forced to go bottle for his build. Maybe he was also running a bottle here. That sentry ward for him though was really just smarts work. So you can't just evade and move through Shikuchi being a little over aggressive. You can't hide inside the static link. And this is where the damage output starts to get really scary for a Weaver. Because you've just got this, this plasma field burst damage. And bottle won't let you really like survive through it. Like, the burst damage is something where you get surprised by it. This, this is what, yeah, this is what I was waiting for. Not actually this hero, though. I don't, I'm not 100% certain what the Doombringer is doing here. Unless he feels his Satterblast is going to do something. He's actually only going to mana pull. Okay, okay, he can do both. He's, he's just got enough. Now, maybe he's going to plasma field and static link. So, this attacking from the Weaver now means absolutely nothing. They need to score to burn down maybe. Move into the tree line. The plasma field damage should be there. And he made the right choice. He attacked into the Doombringer instead. He stole 112 points of damage out of that Weaver. And realized he couldn't kill the Weaver. There was no point attacking him. So he just put his atta one attack. One attack was all he required. Threw it into the Doombringer who had the tower aggro and didn't ship the tower aggro either. Which meant maybe he still picked up a kill. He doesn't get the experience for it. But the line gaming also has put that experience attack. three ways. It was good experience and a good Radiant game, don't get me wrong. But fortified. at the same time, they committed three heroes, including the offlane Doombringer, to split experience three ways, and they still ended up giving a kill over to the mid solo who's just looking to build a mech. So money is the most important thing for him.
Meanwhile, on the bottom lane, because, uh... Well, he doesn't have any CS. It's 4-1. But this is... This was bound to happen anyway. And this is kind of like the downside about the LGDC deck lineup. Like, you're running a faceless Void, who... <laughs> Coming over to steal every bit of farm that Super's trying to take. He's got a salve and a poor man shield, so there's no reason why he can't just keep doing this. That observer ward of theirs, that dire ward is in perfect position. Sentry ward, however, uh, the observer ward of the radiant side. Hoops off, double edge, faces boy, go too cocky. And he thought he was uh, invis in the tree line. But he saw that centaur coming up. He saw him at least cross this line. But he didn't see him loop up around the trees. The Fog of War was actually there for that. Thanks. Hmm. Center ulti, middle lane. Having another crack at maybe. There's no doom up, but uh, it doesn't matter. The static link's coming too late, which means you're still seeing the, the Weaver doing considerable damage. <laughs> and this is, uh, this is another, another fault to the LGD lineup. Even if you rotate the supports, they can't do anything. You want to throw a, a, a paralyzing cask for that? That means you're going to cripple the effectiveness of this top lane for when the Doombringer does come back. But then again, they're doing that anyway. We've got three heroes across level Time four. Flies. I know a lot of people are like, yeah, supports must have levels. But in this case, you don't want to get the supports levels. Take the T1 tower if that's what your real objective is. But then Rubik comes up, Fade Bolts and takes the entire creep wave down. And now your push has been throttled. They're going to use Voodoo Restoration, but if they keep attacking this tower, they're going to bring it within Deny Range. And with no Creep Wave, they can't really do much with that. There's Throw Ranger finally popping up to level 5 with the Hand of Midas. So maybe that was the other way they're approaching this. Actually, with the Midas, he's done a... Uh, I was about to say, he, he did, did himself a, a, a bad pull because he wants to keep the Creep Wave in the lane. Oh my god. Observer and Sentry being planted down. He must be searching for the Weaver. Centaur's hiding in the tree line, a fresh blink dagger over on him. It's gonna spell a lot of trouble for the Faceless Void if he can't backtrack. And now Centaur, he's close enough. Hoof stomp, double edge, and then Soul Assumption damage. Not a single one of those abilities was backtracked. So the Faceless Void will take a fall. As the Weaver, <laughs> living life by the suckling on the bottle. Right. This try is still not level 6 yet. But she will take the top attack. tower. Ruby's coming in, and now, whoop, well, it's a pickup. It's over on the drone. Radiant Drop it down. The tower's killed by the dire side. Huge. But Weaver, gonna get gassed up. That's gonna be, well, silencing him, but really? Radiant's it doesn't matter once he's popped the security. And Doombringer is on the wrong side of the tracks. But with Scorched Death as well as Tranquil Boots movement speed, he will be able to get himself away to safety. That's a good play there, too, by, uh, by LGDC deck. They realized. So with the TPs coming in, they were kind of in a position where they had to fight. They couldn't just run themselves away. They popped the Chilling Touch. Drow Ranger went for that level 1 up in the gust. And just silenced the Weaver the second he TP'd in. Which means there was no follow-up with Crib Swarm, even though he doesn't have, actually have it leveled. And the Weaver did just back up once he realized they were ready to fight. Alright, so middle lane maybe in Garda. Garda has rotated in here. Obviously, they realize there's no point having him up on that top lane anymore. And uh, the Drow Ranger has hit level 6. So, welcome to the buff up. And welcome to the buff up. Increased damage by 19 now. Over on the Razor. Coming from just the Precision Aura. Faces Void, unfortunately, doesn't get the buff up for that. But then again, everyone's kind of missing from that bottom lane. They're up on the top lane. The Centaur Blink Deck is going to get to work. Doom Blink. Off stop. Doom. Everything's committed to kill off that Drow Ranger. And this is where the Blink Hero is... Don't, don't make Drow Ranger's life any easier. And now, that whole laning phase I was talking about. Like all these, all these wonderful points of light gaming, which could potentially work for them, as far as like the head-to-head -head matchups, out the window. Because they were capable of getting such an early blink dagger over on the centaur. His movements have been really effective so far. Like that Blink Dagger, he just bought it and then yanked up the bottom lane, got a kill. Ran up to top lane, went with a Doombringer, got a kill. The Rubik as well as Doom ran to middle lane, they killed off maybe twice. These rotations and ganking, it, ganks are really working nicely. And LGC deck, uh, they might show an advantage there in the gold for the moment. Yeah, but the experience, they're going to fall behind. And the map control, 
Well, that will remain constant for the moment. And until either team have enough power to force down towers, there's not really going to be that much of a problem for either side. And really, that's not going to happen for Light Gaming until the Tomb Raider gets a lot further than what he is. And he's the one building into a mech, so it's going to take some time for that. And the Weeb needs to do his chest later. Scoochieing away. <laughs> in this room from maybe. Oh, he's still in range. A secondary Shikuchi. To get that Weaver further away. Faces point. Chrono bottom lane. Gonna catch out two heroes. Rubik's the easiest one to kill off. He also wants to kill him off before he can get the uh, the steal. Because then he can do that. Takes Chronosphere. The center ulti as well. Allowing him to escape the ice blast off target. Expecting maybe him to go into the tree line and TP out to safety. He needed to get that first hit from the very, very start of the Rubik. But he probably thought he couldn't actually hit the Rubik. But beating into a centaur, the chance of getting a kill on that, minimal to none. And the support didn't come Dyer's in time. And Garda wasn't there attack. with level 6. Dyer's structures are 45. Just level 5 and a half. Oh, that's a quick time, that's by a weaver. That was just a familiar drop down, we're gonna give him, it was gonna give him cover fire anyway. Like if they were dire familiars, then maybe there would be a little bit more, like, peril being added into that move. So, LGD deck after realizing that bottom line gank isn't going to work, then bail out. Drone Ranger back into the whole farming kind of thing. Could have actually built a, uh, well, just bought a Morbid Mask. And this will make this a lot more secure as far as farming. But she's going to try and rush into what appears to be a Yasha. So, all about the buff for now. Anamias, yeah, it's all about the money. It is all about the money for him. And with 1,400 behind him, Red Ranger should be doing pretty damn well. Highest net worth on the field. At this point now, the next goal is level 11. And Garter as well as Ancient Apparitions. Take it round, boys. You're going to be needed. The Centaur is coming back again. So it's going to break. It's only going to be on Garter. Ice, Ice Blast will be coming in. A little bit too late, however. They've already got the kill. And Red Ranger just says, screw this. Headed towards the middle lane. There's a tier 1 tower with her name written all over it. And at level 6, or well, at least past level 6, Drone Ranger can easily do this. The plasma field is there. They realize there's a lot of heroes up on top lane. So you go for the straight trade off. And this is exactly what the Drone Ranger should be doing. Once you actually crack that level 6, most tier 1 towers should belong to you. You crank level 11, you should be looking to bring down tier 2 towers. Now, she doesn't really have that, that great of a pushing lineup with her, with her team. But uh, it's just a drone range of damage output that makes it work for your Void. He doesn't have Chrono? Yeah, he does. Ice Blast comes up from the edge. Apparition with a Chilling Touch bonus damage. They pick up the Weave. Perfect control. The Familiars will drop. They don't really have enough damage. They can hunt these. And they're going to get to bottom lane anyway. Because you've already got Drone Ranger as well as Garda looking to force that lane out. And she's going for a third point now up in the Precision Aura. But the T1 tower is always going to go down the top lane. Doombringer will take the last hit for that one. But Tro Ranger, well, they're pinging to say get back, and rightly so. The TP is coming into the tree line, and it's just the Doombringer coming into lane. While in middle lane, not quite sure why Razor was that far over the river. Once you bring down the T1 tower in the top lane, you're obviously either going to TP yourself down the bottom lane to stop the Tro Ranger pushing out, or you rotate back through the middle lane to go into your own jungle. Or potentially push the T1 tower in the middle lane anyway. Dyer's nice snipe, AA. Nice snipe. So Ice Blast killing off Rubik. And Light Gaming looks like they are going to try and force this T1 tower in the mid. The question is, does LGC deck really want to fight this? They do, they actually know, they don't have Chrono. They have the Wish Doctor Ultimate, so they can definitely zone Light Gaming out. They just can't really get kills with it. That's, that's the downside. And because you really can't get kills with it, there's not that much point throwing it down at this point of the game. Keeping people off the tier 1 tower is great, but sacrificing your combo later on. Are you still an 80 second cooldown timer? To the 120 second cooldown timer. So just wait for them to come off cooldown. Hold stop in. Paralyzing cars gonna fly. The ice blast. It will connect an XTD, or maybe it won't. Centaur ult is away. 
the last zoom bringer to get to the bottom lane to farm up faster as well. Weaver doesn't care. And Dry Ranger continues to safe lane farm. So with the casual Yasha for the moment, but she's got to be looking into a BKB ASAP. Almost worth just keeping it as as a casual Yasha, and going into the BKB. We're TP. Going into the tier 2 tower as opposed to tier 1 tower. She's going to arri arrive a little bit later. And there's no real cover, so if, even if there was an observer wall sitting here in the lane, it's still being revealed out what she's doing. And then walks directly into the lane anyway. Yeah. Five man fight. There's what else you see they can get a force. They have Chrono and Wish Dr. Ultimate. Why wouldn't you? But. Jesus Void. He's going to get this right. Leap in. Chrono. And now Wish Doctor. Let it go. He's going to pump it into the sensor, but the Chrono is stolen. He got all of them! Faces Boy can move freely inside, but the Hulk stop up. He's gonna split up the Dry Ranger. Shows up the damage into the engine apparition, the Meg Charge. Keeping LGC Deck alive for the moment, but the Fable also flying through. They finally get that last bit of damage to kill up the Dry Ranger. The bounce done to kill up XDD. One punch from Faces Boy will pick him off too. And maybe his ultimate triggered. And it's getting some respect from Light Gaming. Not enough though, because now he's going to walk in close. There's three of them close with the plasma field. Faces Void had to beat him down, maybe sealing the damage. And then I, the Storm, still doing heavy lifting. The Sentry Wall was down, hence they saw that we Time lapse, Shikuchi, well, time lapse on cooldown. Shikuchi is not. The plasma field, it was meant for when he was low in the trees. The Weavers moved up high. Shikuchi again. Plasma field not available. They're checking the tree line. They check correctly. The LGD C deck. It looked like it was going to become a really, really bad fight for them. But then Light Gaming, they decided to turn to try and fight into that. Sure, you still had your two familiars up, but maybe it was buffed up and the Eye of the, eye of the Storm was still going. The Meg save from LGDC deck, that's what dragged out the early part of that fight. And made it a lot more favorable for them. If the Weaver did survive, then then you could have said maybe it was a it was a little bit more of an even trade, but Jukes were not successful. And now you do have <laughs> hilariously for a hero which died so early on. Dro Ranger still 8.2k net worth. This Myers is doing some serious work, and she went into the jungle to keep farming. He had a level two ultimate, so the buff up has now been increased again. 45 is is the increase, which means every single hero, including the supports. Ancient Apparition, as well as the Witch Doctor, are hitting with bonus 45. And then the Chilling Touch, like, max attacks 4, but the damage 60. You start racking up this DPS, and the early damage, the burst damage, can even come physically out of LGD. Chrono, Witch Doctor Aldi, they just want to ensure that this Weaver is dead, including the Gust being used. Just in case the Chrono, like, Lost half of his time duration. Uh, Pizza coming out from Rubik saying they're going for Roshan. They're 100% right. But these are level 4 cold arrows. <laughs> Roshan even just getting through his first target. He took 2,000 points of damage before that happened. And the familiars will come in, but they've just lost one of them. They'll show him again and just lost two of them. The stun will connect, but Drone Range just got fed 200 gold. Leaps in, goes on the Rubik. And now it's going to be, well, Voodoo Restoration Soul, not really what they were searching for. The Meg Charge comes in, so does XTT. He hasn't, well, he has actually cast Doom. Still on cooldown for the moment. Leap away by the face of Void Garda, trying to survive. The Gust pushing back XTD. And the arrow is slow. They've got to try and kite him. Get rid of the bugs. That nah, get rid of the bug first. Get rid of the bug first. There we go. Too much negative armor on you. Hoof stop up, completely blind, and completely between the two heroes. That's actually disastrous for them. The Restoration is still giving life points for Odyssey Deck like to keep on fine. They'll lose their Razor because the Soul Ascension from the Visage. Triple kill! But you've still got a triple kill coming in for a Drone Ranger. Trying to fight the bugs off. Seize the Weaver for a moment. They have to get rid of all this damn negative armor. Again now, the Doombringer coming in, getting attacked by Ancients at the same time. Drone Ranger losing the extra buff up. Also a negative 8 armor, but it doesn't really matter for the moment. She sees the Weaver, gets an ultra kill on the Drone Ranger. 6 to 2, a fresh Blink Dagger. And Drone Ranger's looking to chase down even further. Can't go much further than that, however. But an ultra kill, I think you're happy with that as a Drone Ranger. The Phaser's Void survives, you lose your Razor, hey, it happens. At this point, he's just a mech. But the Drone Ranger picked up a Blink Dagger, and now I can even walk back to base. Can't get it straight away, but uh, Ultimate Orb is what Drone Ranger will be looking at. 
and going into the Manda style. Either that or it is going to be a BKB. But the BKB may not, may, may not be as enticing as some extra stat points. And you just skyrocket your Drow Ranger up to 10,000 net worth in a very, very, very small space of time. You even got Aghanim Scepter's on the way. Faceless Void sitting 1500 away, and they're also going to go back in for Roshan. This is the Aegis Seymour the Drow Ranger wants to have. And it all started with this last time. But Light Gaming won't start it again. They're keeping their distance. This Drow Ranger, yeah, I'm dropping the TP. And she will take this Aegis Seymour. This, this game is getting out of control. Light Gaming, they won their early laning stage, and then they, they couldn't control the Drow again. Drow only needed like three, four minutes inside the jungle to catch up and get up to level 11. That early hand of mine has paid off. It paid off so much. And the consistent pressure wasn't there from Lie Gaming. Because they don't really have a lineup that can force consistent pressure. Sure, you got a Centaur that's going to jump in and Hoof Stomp. But you don't take map control. You don't force LGD back into their base and hold them there. Because you don't have pushing power. You've got Familiars, but right now Drow Ranger's damage output loves Familiars. You feed more. She got 200 gold before that last fight because the Familiars flew over the pit just to have a scout. But they died in two hits from Drow Ranger, and at this point, she's attacking rather quickly. That's rather deep for an AA. <laughs> Put down the aggressive observer ward, bait out the doom. Well, got a funny feeling. We're about to see a denied up ancient apparition. The Chrono going off at the moment. Will we actually steal Vortex? Not going to do enough. Wish Dr. Roller then realized the controlling effect of that doom of that um, face boy Chrono wasn't enough, so Wish Dr. just threw the ulti out. Also, very surprisingly, Carter, not going a single point up in Maledict. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. Oh, the Ice Blast isn't going to stop this tower from dying, unless they use what? Whoops! Dyer's <laughs> bottom tower has <laughs> directly onto XTD. Yeah, he's going to TP back to base anyway, so it wouldn't have had their desired effect. This now means Ice Blast is on cool. <laughs> what the hell is that? Point Blank Grange Time Walk? I guess he was trying to be tricky by doing the, uh, the little hop skip. <laughs> Uh, doesn't work this time around. Fable gonna bounce through the entire creep web as well as uh, the heroes of LGDC deck. But this trigger the mech and Drow Ranger keeps pounding into this tower. Weaver gonna get a nice little crit swarm off, catching out. In fact, uh, four of the heroes of LGDC deck. So there's an observed one up on the high ground that's seeing this. The Mana Star will trigger now, it's been delivered in. I think Weaver was actually searching for the courier for a moment. And Rubik getting a nice denied. night. Not the easiest thing in the world. The courier actually turned around for this. What's he got? Uh, look at the four staff of Garda. A four staff witch doctor? Alright. Maybe this is the only way he feels he can escape from, uh, yeah. The, the hilarious thing is, if the Kuri didn't turn around, then that would have been the perfect box, the, the perfect timing for the Weaver to arrive and take out the Courier. That's really unfortunate. If LGD Deck were more efficient in the Courier movements, that Courier would be dead right now. No, yeah. but no, the interesting thing for Garda is having a four staff. Especially like when you got something like a Chronosphere. Only the Blink Dagger will get you into a, like a better position. But obviously you want to have the mana as well as the, uh, the regeneration. Not to mention some kind of extra maneuver to go up against heroes like Centaur, for example. Dyer's top tower is under attack. But at the same time, it's... Mm. Now you got Aghanim Scepter, which could have also been a potential. If you really wanted extra, like, safety, yeah, yeah, it's, it's Blink Dagger. You can even go a Shadow Blade onto the Witch Doctor. It's classic. Bottom lane push. Too easy for LGDC deck. Current Drone Ranger that's up at level 14. Top tier 2 tower. Well, it looks like it'll still be a trade-off, but LGDC deck going to go high ground. The combo is up, apart from the Ice Blast, which is still on cooldown. And the leap into Chrono from Stuck Rolling is what they want. Attack. Two years to be caught inside of this. Probably don't want much more than that, considering the Witch Doctor ulti as well. Because there's no Aghanim's upgrade for Witch Doctor. It means the Chrono combination isn't as powerful. Because normally you catch out three to four heroes inside that, trigger your ultimate, and then the bounce damage just goes through them all. But because you went for the four stuff, you don't have that kind of intimidation factor anymore. Illusion. Uh, Mordra Ranger. 
Five of them on the field. Mantaran illusion. If he actually sends him in with just three of them, it could reveal out the fact, like... Or you could just send all four. I suppose that could work too. And like, well, okay, why is there four on the bottom lane? A little here as well. Two of them are gone. Shikuchi threw. They took too much damage. So they know that both of those aren't real. Um, what are we got coming up? I think trying to afford an Eagle Song. With 3.2k gold. Uh, if you had more, then maybe I would have said a BKB. I got a funny feeling this will be an Eagle Song she'll pick up from the side shop. And just go directly into Butterfly. Risky, but... Could work. I still want to see the BKB though. In this game, it just seems to be a lot... Yeah. There's just safety for it. I know the physical damage is a problem in the Duke. Actually, maybe not. Maybe, maybe just going for life points and stats is better. Mm. Well... Let's let's wait and watch. Currently, the push is coming on the top lane. So T2 for T2 again. Light gaming still still keep making the right choices on this. They keep looking for tower trade-offs. So LG needs to take remove all the other towers now. But they're looking for trade-offs wherever they possibly can. There's a lot of TPs coming back, so Garda. As well as Faces Void, they've already returned. But maybe we'll re all our return to the bottom lane. As this time around, the courier does get sniped. Hey, it's just worth it's more than that. Let's smoke your deceits on that. It's just because you can't sell them back. The courier is brought down with, with both the smokes from LTDC deck. So, no smoking for three minutes. It's health zone time. Or, you could just buy a whole brand new smoke while you're back at base. Yeah, that'll also work. Observer wards on the ground. Just a littering of, uh, of small items. How long until Roshan? Okay, so a minute and a half until potential spawn time. Still a while away. Familiars? Ah, had to resummon. That's not that bad considering he has the Agnims upgrade now. So the timing was right for Super to have that happen. Faces Voice still went for the Chrono target. With that Agnim Scepter, he's always going to be trying to pound into this. Now, yeah, okay, you got 4.6k gold, Dro. And two item slots because the Aegis Immortal has been reclaimed. So, what do we do from here? Still not getting my answers. If it's a BKB, then you'd just pick up the Ogre Club already. You could have even just picked up the Ogre Club as well as Mithril Hammer, considering she's running around with her TP scrolls for a while. But, hmm, center ulti. I think it's getting a little twitchy. The Weaver backs up on the bottom lane. Still trying to get into these damage dealing items. You got Treads drums as well as Mithril Hammer this far in on a Weaver. This is not nowhere near the amount of damage. Hey, that was on the courier. Okay, now, we, now we're okay. Now we're okay. Not perfect. Normally by 28 minutes on a, on a Weaver, you want to be able to have drums, treads, Dasso, as well as having a BKB already up and running. That's kind of what you need as a Weaver. That's the timing for the Weaver. But she just doesn't have that at the moment. And you're losing on you're losing on the damage output. Dro's now giving plus 58 damage points to every single hero on the field. Apart from Faces Void. But he's the Chrono man. That's all he really has to be. Okay, you got 5.2k gold now. That's that's like Kind of like KB time. <laughs> They're moving the Dro Ranger out. It's bait. Actually, similarly microing it like you would a normal Dro Ranger, and then a second one to come up. Yeah, because you, you you don't you don't fire you don't fire like that if you just right clicked in in a certain direction. Like that's just some next level bait. Reveals the fact that Light Game was searching for an opening, and Light just went for it anyway. They thought maybe ah uh, who knows it could have been the real one. We we're just falling for a trap. Alright, BKB, 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 5.6k gold, spends a large chunk of it. And now that's our extra, uh, extra security. This top lane push, is Light Gaming really 
Why don't you go high ground? The dire side I've just put... <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> I don't think really mean to throw that one out there. Alright, there's a move coming up. It's top lane. Faces Void will drop, which means now the Chrono is lost. So a good pick up there from Lion Gaming. But they're still committing the Doom Ultimate. They had a lot of heroes up there, and the Drow Ranger is still getting more space to farm up and move. I know she's already at the point where it probably doesn't matter as much considering he's already level 16. But you've also got space for maybe on the bottom lane to do this. That's a full Agonim Scepter coming his way. The Yoga Club getting picked up by the Ancient Apparition as well, so a little bit more life points for now. But another 1400 gold, and uh, you'll have an Agonim Scepter upgrade also on the Ancient Apparition. So you're getting, you're getting triple Ags across LGD. And with that, then you get your Intimidation Factor that LGD, LGD C-Deck is searching for. So Light Gaming, with this in mind, or with what's coming up, they need to go high ground now. There's no choice for them. There is no choice. Pickoffs here and there won't be enough. This ulti combo is going to be available for LGD C-Deck. And while you might be able to win a fight outside the base, Going into the base up against said combo, you are going to get destroyed. You need it. You need to be able to either fight LGD Cynic outside or fight them before that combo is up. So LGD Cynic will grab Rosham. They can see more into the hands of the Drill Ranger. She does not have a TP scroll, so they have to use the fortification. Timelines for the Weaver needs to be used now. But it's very slow, consistent damage, so he's already at half of his life points. And this Ice Blast, he's holding onto it for now. Well, actually, he has to, considering it's on cooldown. That would have been the initial hit. Ah, uh, these familiars, no drop down. Just walk off to the side. I think maybe he's hoping just to plant a field and destroy him up. If he's a little bit further up, he could have gone for that. Well, the Visage is still there in, in the neighborhood. I don't want to risk things. They send the Ancient Apparition down the bottom lane to find their farm. While up on top lane, that's where maybe, as well as uh, Void, Haste. will try and pick off these little suckers. You got Garda as well, so if they fly over the tree line, they're flying north. Plus, the field will give them the vision so they are able to get one of Super's familiars. He's still going to resummon if required. While uh, Weaver runs through the Drow Ranger. This is an Agassi Mortal Drow Ranger with a BKB. Blinks in, tries to go for the blind gust on the Weaver. Unable to do that though, mainly because of this little sucker up on the top lane, uh, up, up on the top, up on the high ground. Which gave all the vision in the world for Re Weaver to know that Drone Ranger was coming. Looks so, like yeah, a light gaming now to the T2 oh. On the bot lane, I'll head. It's a quick off start from the Centaur. Ulti away as well. There's no one in the neighborhood. Just being very cautious. The familiars will be left behind to try and beat down this tower. Solid but sure they will win this. But that seems to be still caught on the wrong way. Keeping in the tree lane, guard going to be time. Need to be it. Like you for the parallel cut, so you've got flat time. Good support still behind. Uh, the experience is pretty close to this world as well. But it's just a course. I mean, it feels a long way behind. The Centaur doesn't really have that big an impact. He's getting bigger, don't get me wrong. That's a heart and a halberd, which he's building into at the moment. There's a lot of money on onto him. And the Doombringer's got Shiva's guard as well as, like, Blinker and Mech. That's really nice as well for the three minutes in having 2.1k gold. Steve. But it's all about your timing. Oh, that's a little thing to you. Where you the, uh, <laughs> the, you get the base damage increase, Ancient Apparition is going to die on the bottom lane. Um, nothing is ever going to stop that, especially when that Doom is critting. Yeah. So you actually you get the increase coming into the Weaver, but it's only by 10 because the agility point is crap for a Rubik. But the Precision Aura is actually not as helpful as you'd hope. Uh, Gus. Chrono, you have to be committed. Oh, yeah, it's have to. There is the Chrono anyway. That must be, yeah, the max duration cost your level 18 Drow Ranger. So we've been down for 60 seconds. That blink initiation working nicely. 
Uh, are you gonna try and deward this? No gem, no vision. LG, you see that they're watching live gaming walking everywhere. Uh, with this Weaver down, they could just try and force a buyback. Weaver does have one at the moment. In fact, the entire line from live gaming has a buyback. You want to force it anyway. 30 seconds on the sidelines, that's enough to arrange to get higher ground. If they bring down this tower, you can already see the bottom eye is on the way. Not to mention, you have an AGC model on the drone ranger. Last time, it just got worked out. This time around, you're gonna push high ground. So up they come, Centaur, looking for the horse on. Drone ranger, come on, China, not now. Put yourself down. Yeah, that's a little bit better. The LGDC deck. Where is his face before? Long way back, actually. He's making sure he's not gonna get doomed up. So they will up Chrono in this fight. Now, Drone Ranger's attacking from the low ground. Just beating into the tier 3 tower. I'm just trying to bait out the situation. That's all that really is. Weaver? That's a Doombringer. He's here with smoke. He can see the face void. He doesn't have vision of him yet. Even though technically the, the line of sight was, was extended, I think I can reveal this. This smoke tier, he's still getting very, very close. Now, I think they're worried about the Weaver, because that's where the Weaver initiated from last time. And now the smoke will break. The ancient apparition ain't close enough. At the same time, now bandits are pushing. Hold on, stop. Go on the Dread Ranger. Remember, still got Aegis in Mortal, but it will be triggered out right now. Fallen. They didn't keep her alive long enough. And now, Brickle to safety. And this push is up here. The range will probably even uh, take some time to send that courier out. It's probably happening already unless you want to hold on to buyback, but having the butterfly on you is going to be so much more valuable. Yeah, there it is. So, caught us off, not husband. Could have actually brought uh, three small seats, which is sitting on the ground. Like children with toys. Laying all over the floor inside the dive base. There's a full butterfly in for a Dro Ranger. So we watch this increase. It's 65 right now. And now it's 76 for everybody. And she moves up to, well, about 350 damage to 360 damage a hit. Not too shabby at all. Uh, find your money, Hannah Midas. And Midas. And yeah, I think she wants to give herself a secret. Maybe playing bait game. That's all this is right now. While on the ball lane, there's a little battle going on between the Ancient Apparition as well as the Weaver. Weaver will obviously win that one. But they were trying to use... Maybe as bait, so the Centaur will initiate him. He'll blink in, and then the Gust will come from the Ranger. That will even be fast enough that you can stop the Hoof Stomp. It would have been fast enough to stop the Double Edge, at least. So you get the, you get the Sun, but you don't have to get follow-up damage you're searching for. You said of Observer what's coming out, what do we got? So look at that Heaven's Alpha on the Centaur. Not a bad item, but not that great up against a Draw Ranger at the moment. Uh, or a Razor, because they both have BKBs. And Faces Boy will soon have its own one too, so the Halibut won't be anywhere near as effective as I'd really like. Uh, okay, maybe BKB will trigger up by stuff. And again, look for the... I was keeping the restoration up, Boyd. He's entering the corner, but there's too many including his own Drone Ranger. The guy is pushing back XDZ. Now, the Drone Ranger is probably going to go down, and then Weaver buggers on the back of her tail. And the Weaver gets the kill. Faith is Boyd going down as well. And Lion Gang pushing LGDC Day a long way back to pick up the Ancient Apparition. It's a triple kill for the Doombringer. And LGDC Day, for all of their advantage that they had, they just got themselves into the worst fight they could ever have had. Here. Right here. This is not where they want to be. XCD just stands in the front line. He's just walking around with an album which now is, in fact, effective. Because maybe he has no VKP charge. 
But the familiar birds, the decimate effect coming in too. They will take mid rank here. And Drone Ranger, though she bought the butterfly, she felt she felt invincible. And she had every rules though. Horrible fight for DC Nick. They'll lose two rooses here. With no buyback from the Drone Ranger. There's just nowhere to go here. Maybe getting bugged up. Another major Dyer's problem, the fact that Cryptwomp was capable of connecting Void and to leave himself in. Where's this Wish Doctor Ultimate? Now it's going to pop off. It goes on the way of but the Chrono is stolen by Raider again, uh, by Rubik again. Catching out the rest of LGDC deck. But this does save the bottom racks, which keeps the hopes alive for LGDC deck. Their, their team fight combination is still a lot stronger than Light Gaming. What they did was just get themselves caught into a really tight enclosed position, which was never going to work. What is this Pudgeling doing? What is this Pudgeling doing? What are you Radiant's doing? has been slain. Why? Couriers don't have to die like that. Well, they're gonna be quick about this. They'll be very, very quick about this. Anonymized salt, salt, uh, salt. So maybe we'll be able to pick the cheese here. In fact, they might want to give this over to the... Well, you won't even give it to the void. It will drop it. Be it all and the air comes from the drone. So third rush up, yeah. No. He's in the third rush up. Oh, no, he's gonna sell his TP. They're gonna go for it. For a, I'm gonna say a death push. Wish not. Ulti is coming off cooldown in 10 seconds time. But it goes straight down middle lane. Force the fight again. They must get a Rex at the moment. If they don't, then late gaming will six point one side lanes. Ancient apparition as his agony acceptor, which is gonna be really useful for this fight. At the same time, Doombringer picked up his own. Not as useful. If we're going to be perfectly honest. An e blade Well, that's a nice item. That's not the attack. At the same time, Santos. To throw range from attacking. He just want to win. He's going to be in the right position. He's been hit by the ice blast. But he still managed to have the crow before. He'll end up shattering from that from the nature of the ultimate. While Rage is standing in the front lines. Doombringer. Alex, now they want this two-three tower. XCD jumping back here. Double all harder. No heaven tower on the three-three two. Here comes XCD. They cannot take another fight. They have to back away. It looks like three-three-three. He has his chrono up. In just a couple. They're being of used by the Weaver to stop the Drone Ranger from attacking, but then pops off the Manta style, chasing off the Weaver. The static link is there. The lead down. There's your chrono catching out two heroes. Drone Ranger trying to beat down the Centaur. This is the one she wants right now. But the Centaur is it all coming in to just be dropped with Drone Ranger. Not enough space, and the Rubik chrono is now going to be used again, causing serious problems. Well, maybe this Ultimate isn't going to be enough. Gala needs to find space. Throw a bounty subject, throw some physical DPS, maybe this ultimate is still doing some heavy, heavy lifting. The static link will be that Shiva's got Ice Blast, means Super will die. Gotta need one more attack. Cannot get it. It's a triple kill. A real Doom Ringer. Well, the first is Void coming back in again. The Versace, well, did trigger on the bottom lane. The ancient apparition. Dyer's and Ice Blast is such a pain in the ass. It caused so many problems for Light Gaming in that fight. We had a grand total of six buybacks, three from either side. They threw everything they had at that tent. You all the Aegis of the Immortal and the cheese being triggered in the engagement. Dyer's Long, drawn out engagement, and still attack. no advantage gained by LGDC deck. This is how much it takes for them to try and win. The T3 tower in the bottom lane was brought down during that engagement as well. Just the momentum of the bottom wave didn't work. So what's the spot of war now? How much money was even left? <laughs> Net worth. That's a big rise up for live gaming. Then he expected the other place came in. <laughs> you wanna... You wanna spike? How is that spike? Like a fraction of Bart Simpson's hair. Seven thousand five hundred.
Experience gain. It actually was technically more than that. Literally like eight and a half to nine K worth of experience gain and then lost it again during the fire. <laughs> beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Alright, we have something to get that he blade pick up. Actually bought them some nice only like maybe half a cent to it to it. Like, the centaur is the one that's really making these big plays. The jump is from him. I keep a lot of people out. Not to mention the Rubik. <laughs> he's he's triggered like more chronos on heroes in the last three minutes than Void has. Every time Void's looking to do it. Yeah, it's like, ah, oh, I got one. I got two. And then all of them down. I hide a team. Because Chrono comes in. You just, you just think about it from, from a physical, physical perspective. You trigger your Chrono here. Which means your hero is going to move into these positions, so they back into the chrono. Which means a Rubik just needs to be able to move up to the side area, steal the chrono, and then you can is not out of out of position. Or say out of position in the position they need to be in. But you can't attack from two chronos away. Unless to open snipers in this game, and I'm just missing things. Like you need every single hero would take a Dyer's bottom bear are under head. attack. Now, bottom rice being pushed by the familiars. <laughs> Early things too. The Dyer's bottom bear is picking it. It's crew able to be doing it when it is, but it's the tracks that are picking off slowly. I mean, really familiars. The reason they're up in 28 seconds time though, so they fall back to kill a familiars when they want to be fighting heroes. Here they come again. Dyer's bottom barracks are under attack. Dyer's bottom what is barracks this? are full Is that even Dota? Tons of food to scout them out. Throw Ranger, there you go. All three of them being picked up. Three of them got handed over, but you just brought down a Ranger Axe for it all. Because Ranger Axe has no, has no standard reach to reach either. That's not an LP. But Ancient Apparition. He's looking for a target. Then again, then again, is there vision for it? Hell yeah, there is. Oh, some wards are about, are about to be tying out. This one's the fresh one, so they're, they're looking. They're looking to defend now. LGC deck in this Double position damage. right here. This is the primary area for to fight now. They need to know what's up in the high rounds. Looks like a light gamer coming from the other side instead. A little easier to make the jump. Obviously, there's a small amount of space on the side, as opposed to here where they can use the trees to cover. Now, draw ranges up on the top, keeping the defense up. Buyback coming in cooldown and the didactic eye of the team really want to fight until the buyback's getting off cooldown. Then again, you do have a DD rune over on this Weaver. And with an alpha four inside the two after he gets the two more, maybe, but that's not what you want to see. The Chrono's gone off with the wish on rolling as well. Weaver, he's got to kill off Garo for this Oli damage. He's bouncing around the Ruby now. He triggers on the Oli. Garo, look at that BBS. The DD rune will wear off the above. Ranger and then get it right in the face of the tower. The double double kill. The main will die outside the face, but this evil hit like a truck into LGT. The Crypt will win all the time in the world. Again, I actually want to give for all my pleasing of, uh, of the Weaver's ZPS as well as the Drow Ranger's nice little log outside the pit. I want to give EG to the Rubik. I want to give Rubik the man of this match. His Chrono steals were on the mark every single time. And there was nothing really Void could do about it. I guess a leap into Chrono. You've got nothing else to channel, nothing else to cast. You can't do anything about it. So, man, Rubik, it wasn't just his stealing, it was the position that blinked.